Welcome to Expand Your Fempire with Katerina Rando, the podcast for women in business on a mission, sharing ideas to support you to grow, lead, and thrive. Now, here's your host, Katerina Rando. My goal in life is to support women to build economic power so that they can uplift themselves, their families, and their communities. And what we know is that when women have money, women do good with their money. They invest in their children, they invest in the community, and I want you all to be able to do much more of that. I have been, when I say doing my thing, mentoring women in business for many years. My specialties are sales, speaking to get clients, and being more strategic in your business. And I like to do retreats. I host the Bliss Retreat for Women Leaders on a Mission. And if you have not come on a retreat with me, I invite you to check it out because it's quite amazing. What I have found is that women don't want to be salesy. And in fact, this is a big fear for women in business. And so as a result, many women do what we're doing right now. We go to workshops, we go to seminars, and we want to learn how to do it effectively. Here's the challenge. A lot of the trainings on sales that you're getting are not feeling authentic to you. They want you to have a script. They want you to push pain points. My friends, how often do you want to get together with a stranger that you've never chatted with before? And the first thing out of their mouth is something that you're supposed to talk about your pain. That doesn't feel good. And here's the other thing. When you get off that phone, you're not going to be blissing to talk to them again next time. One of the things I set as an intention in all my conversations, and we have to call them sales because I want you to know what we're talking about. All we're doing when we're having a sales conversation is talking with a potential client or somebody who we are not sure is a potential client. And we're seeing if what we've got matches what they're looking for. Are you with me? That's all we're doing. And guess what? You're a woman. You know how to talk to people. You know how to have a conversation. How good does it feel to be on the other side of a script? You've been there. Do you like that? No, nobody likes that. Right now, what I'm going to share with you is what it takes to get a potential client to a yes. Now, of course, you've heard people need to know you. They need to like you. They need to trust you. You've heard that, right? And I would call that influence. Influence is when you have the ability to sway or alter people's thoughts, their beliefs, and bing, 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 very exciting, even their actions. That's influence. Now, sidebar, a whole nother conversation is, here's my influence equation. Visibility plus value plus consistency equals influence. Here's what I want you to get though. When your clients are women, that is not enough. Influence is not enough. There's two other things that you need. You need to be able to build rapport with them. They need to feel good talking to you. There needs to be a easy communication. That's rapport. And the other thing, aside from influence, is that anybody who is considering working with you has to get that you genuinely care, that you genuinely care about making a difference for them in their life, in their business, in their organization. I'm thinking of a gal that I knew way back when, and she told me this, her company they sold to nonprofits. And she went in one day and she did a presentation to the the board of the nonprofits and she had her boss with her. And she was so excited. They sold software to help nonprofits with their donor management and helping them get more donations. And she was so excited about being in this boardroom because she knew that she could absolutely make a difference for this organization and they could serve more. And towards the end of her presentation, she got a little bit choked up 
with all the possibilities for how their software could help this organization. And when she left the meeting and was with her boss in the hallway, he said to her, don't ever do that again. Don't ever get emotional. And I'm saying this to you because some of you may be like my friend who was told in her career before she had her own business, was told, don't wear your heart on your sleeve. Don't get emotional. Don't get personal with your clients. There was this idea that personal is not professional. So let's be clear. I want you to do just the opposite. I want you to not just wear your heart on your sleeve. I want to encourage you to wear your heart all over your business. Because I know that you started your business because you genuinely want to help people or organizations or nonprofits. So please, part of what we have to do to be our authentic self in our businesses is to unlearn what didn't feel right to you at the time anyway. Now, take a deep breath and think about it. Think about what you may have been taught about business or sales that really didn't work for you. But maybe you did it because somebody who was an expert said, this is how you do it. Well, my friends, here's what I know feels good. Talking to gals feels great. Getting to know them feels great. Finding out what their challenges are. That's interesting and fun too, especially when I know I have the solutions. So what I want to encourage you to do is right now pay attention to how you're being in your conversations. And I want to encourage you to be absolutely your authentic self. And when I say your authentic self, some of you are so fun. You are so positive. You are so uplifting. And don't get serious when it's time for sales. Be yourself. Sometimes I'll be talking to a gal, okay, when I'm the potential buyer. We'll be talking, we'll be chatting, we'll be having a nice visit. And then either I'll say, well, let's talk about blah, blah, blah. Or she'll say, let's talk about blah, blah, blah. And now the conversation gets serious. Okay, my friends, be yourself when you're in the sales part too. Start to notice this. This is something really important. When we think of clients, we think of, of course, people that are doing business with us now. But people that used to be our clients are also great potential clients. And so I want to invite you to not forget about your past clients when you're looking for more clients. And the other thing is that note the difference between a contact and really somebody who is a potential client. If they're a name in your database, they're not a potential client. You still have to build influence with them first. Are you with me, my friends? That's a contact, okay? Now, also, everybody who's connected to you on social media, that's a contact. Anybody who's in the groups that you belong to, that's a contact. So do everything you can to take your contacts and convert them to potential clients. And how do you do that? By building influence. And super tip alert, super tip alert, nobody will ever, ever, ever buy from us if we haven't built influence, but also done those other two things. Built rapport and communicate that we genuinely care. I got a lifetime supply of more content for you. So I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to give it all to you today because the thing about learning things, like today we're looking at some different concepts. Hopefully you're having a few reminders. Maybe you're gaining some insight into yourself around sales, which is what I'm hoping for. The thing is that today's education, to create massive change, we need a lot more. Okay, my friends, here's what I want you to know. There's four kinds of potential types of clients. There's the Insta client. And now I want you to listen to this because it's not just about the client, it's also about you, okay? So I'm what you would call an Insta client. I meet someone, I vibe with them. That's the rapport we talked about. I need what they've got and bing, bing, let's get started. I hired a woman last week. Second time we've ever talked. She helps people do videos for their Zoom waiting rooms. I said, hey, that's super cool. I want one of those. 
What do you charge? When can you have it done? Okay, I'll send you my deposit today. And bing, bing, I'll get you the pictures over the weekend. Okay, finito, done, new client for her. Talk to another gal, same day, who does speaker videos. My speaker video needs revamp. I said, same thing. I liked her. She had been recommended to me by one of my clients. I liked her. One conversation, deposit, deadline, done. That's an Insta client. Then there's the slow cookers. They take three to six months to get started. They meet you. They want to look around. They want to check you out. They maybe want to ask around. That's a slow cooker. Then there's the super slow cooker. They take up to a year. And then there's the super, super slow cooker. They take more than a year. Now, why are we talking about this? Because some of you are only looking for Insta clients. And if you're only looking for Insta clients, I'm sorry for you because you're missing 75% of your new clients. Some of you are getting very discouraged when people are not Insta. And I want to sidebar here and say one of the biggest challenges we have as women in business is managing our disappointment. Managing our disappointment du jour. I was so excited yesterday to talk to a gal. We have been talking for a while. Just, hey, Katarina, can't wait to talk to you. Time to talk to her. We confirmed the appointment yesterday. She doesn't call me. I, I text her. She, blah, blah. she vanished. Now, that can create a little disappointment. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't get to talk to so-and-so today. Or it can take you out. It can ruin your day. Sometimes it depends on the day, right? Sometimes it depends on how much sleep you had. Well, my point here, my friends, is that managing our disappointment is a skill that you can begin to master. And I want you to master it because every time you talk to somebody, if they're not an Insta yes, do you get discouraged? And I'm hoping you don't, but if you do, that's something to work on. Because discouragement, disappointment, distraught, depression, all of these things, we want to take them, we want to put them in our mixer, and we want to turn them into determination. And determination, in my opinion, is what separates the women that are still around, being themselves, doing their thing, serving their people, blissing in their business, and the women that are no longer having their own business. And I want to ask you right now, take a deep breath. Ah, on a scale of one to 10, how determined are you to get your goals every month? How determined are you to create the business that you want? Or do you let every challenge du jour take you out? Because you know what? When you have goals, when you want to have a thriving business, there's going to be a disappointment. There's also going to be a lot of triumphs if you can stay determined. So let's assume that you're doing good with your determination. And let's assume that you are talking to gals to have them be your clients. By the way, you may have men as clients too. I'm not an expert at men, believe me, <laughs> in, in business or uh, in life, unfortunately. Some of you may be more of an expert. You can give me some super tips, but here's what I want to say. What I'm talking to you today, I'm talking about selling to women, okay? As we've said, we want to build rapport. We want to communicate. We genuinely care. But here's the part I want you to get right now. If you are an Insta client, you tend to look for the Insta clients. If you are a slow cooker, you tend to look for the slow cookers, or you tend to expect slow cookers. Give you an example. A while back, I hired one of my clients. She's been my client for a couple of years, love her so much. And I hired her to help me with something from my business. We get on the phone. This is the second conversation. Okay. Second conversation. First one was, Hey, can you help me with XYZ? Yes, I can help you. Great. Okay, let's schedule a time to talk about it so we can get started. This is what I said. We get on the phone. She says to me, Katerina, 
did you get my email proposal I sent you? I said, my friend, you might have sent it, but I haven't seen it. And she says to me, first thing, well, why don't I give you some time to look at it and we can schedule another call? Did everybody hear that? Okay. And what I said to her was, my friend, why don't you just tell me what's in the proposal so we can get started today? What's the difference? I'm an Insta client. I want to get going. She is a slow cooker. And so rather than say what was in the proposal so she could get the sale today, she, because she's a slow cooker, she wasn't thinking that way. So this is a really important thing for you to pay attention to after our time together today. What kind of client are you? Because if you're finding, wow, people are taking quite a while to get started. Mira, Mira, is that because maybe you take a long time to get started? And how can we accelerate that? Now, guess what? You can be any kind of client you want. You can stay a super, super slow cooker if you want for being other people's clients. But for your clients, we want to start to look for the Insta. And by the way, when we're Insta, we get frustrated with the super, super slow cookers and the slow cookers. I just talked to a lovely gal yesterday. We talked a few months back when I went to Chicago. We had a nice visit live and in person. We talked again. I am good with her being a super, super slow cooker. She's more concerned that I'm going to get frustrated with her. No, because here's why. I like her. I know I can serve her. If you like somebody, meaning you have rapport with them, because you want clients that you have rapport with, would you agree, my friends? We have rapport. I like her very much. I like her business. I know I can serve her. And here's the other criteria I look for. Excitement alert, excitement alert. I'm looking for clients that I know are going to bring value to my client community. She is a highly skilled professional. Here's the other thing, though. She's very positivo. And I want women that are uplifting to be around. And that's who I want to invite to be in my community. So these are some things that I want you to think about as you are continuing to grow your sales and looking at your prospects. Look at, if you like this person, if you feel that they are a good match for you and you can serve them, do not get discouraged. Because let me tell you something, the super, super slow cookers, they are phenomenal clients once they get started. They will stay with you for years and years and years. One fabulous gal became a, a client not too long ago and I have known her for probably eight years. When she became a client, I was blissing for two weeks because this super, super slow cooker finally jumped in the fountain. I like to call it a fountain and not a funnel, by the way, because we don't want people to come in and go out. We want them to go round and round and round and round. Don't you want clients like that? And by the way, remember we mentioned about past clients. Now, when I say past clients, that doesn't necessarily mean last year or the year before. I'm seeing my friend Sherry is here on the screen. Sherry's been in our community for the last few years. I met Sherry probably 20 years ago, and we she did a program with me back then. And now she's back, bing, 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 in our community. I'm blissing. She's blissing. The community is blissing. This is what we want for your business. So forget about the idea of a funnel where people come in and go out. You want a fountain where they go round and round and round. Okay, now this is a little more strategy than sales, but I'm going to say it anyway. In order for that to happen, you have to have a way to serve people long-term. And one of the ways we do that is with our annual retreat, our bliss retreat for women leaders on a mission. Every woman needs a retreat every year. So they come back, many of them year after year. A mastermind can be, year after year, lots of solutions. Now, how was this conversation for you about the four kinds of clients? Did any of you have any ahas or any insights for yourself and your sales? I remember when I 
did coaching skills for managers at Hewlett Packard. The lady met me at a conference. She heard me speak. She came to a workshop. She was blissing, 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 about to book me. Then, oh, there's a budget freeze now. Oh, we're doing this thing. We have to can't do that right now. Oh, all the training money is gone. Oh, it was two years before I got in the door. Okay. But then, of course, once you're in the door, you're in the door, right? So this is why you got to have a lot of potential clients. You know, what I get concerned is when I'm talking to Mary Jane or Sheila, and they're telling me about the same potential clients they were telling me about last month. That means they don't have enough prospects. Now, you can ask yourself, do you feel like you don't have enough prospects? And if you don't, let me just remind everybody, you go to your contacts and you want to convert them to potential clients. How do you do that? Here's your top three ways. Speaking, networking, and referrals. I'm thinking of my friend. Jennifer is not only in networking, she's in leadership where she's networking. She's the managing director for her Polka Dot Powerhouse chapter. So sometimes it's not just networking, it's getting involved on the board or the advisory board or in the leadership. Now, you can't do that everywhere. Pick one or two places to do it because that takes a lot of time, my friends. And do not be the woman who everyone calls on all the time to do everything because that's probably taken away from your business. So we have to be very conscious of that. I love networking, but what I like better is speaking. Do you have something free or low cost to invite people to? And if you don't, run, do not walk to put that on your calendar. By the way, Guiding principle alert, guiding principle of alert. You do what works, even when it's not working. So what do I mean by that? Today, Emily said to me, we had 28 people registered for this class. 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we actually have a little bit better than 50% show up rate. 50% show up rate is SOP. Standard operating procedure. So I'm telling you this because when you have 20 signups and you have 10 smiles on the screen, don't get discouraged. Know that that is SOP. Let me tell you something though. There's been months when I've had 10 smiles on the screen. Six of them were already my client. The other four were lovely gals, but not necessarily the right match for my client base. Do I say this doesn't work? No. I do the same thing again. You do what works even when it's not working. And consistency over time, you know it creates results, right? You've heard that a thousand times. Here's the other thing about consistency, my friends. Consistency creates mastery. Consistency creates mastery. Not only do you have to do what works, you have to keep doing it so you get masterful at it. I remember when I started doing my own live and in-person events, renting the hotel ballroom, doing events. And my time went from about eight hours a month of what we would call platform time speaking to about 80 hours a month because I was also doing my live and in-person programs. No additional coaching or mentoring, simply more platform time. I 10 x my platform time. Did that 10 x my speaking effectiveness? Absolutely. Because speaking is like a language. There's the speaking. There's what to do before, during, after. There's the connecting with the audience. There's making the offer, which is a separate skill. There's a lot of skills under that one word of speaking. I'm hoping for you that you are embracing this rinse and repeat strategy when we started the pandemic, I was already doing a lot of Zoom before the pandemic started. I was doing hybrid where I had gals in San Francisco at my center. I have a center in San Francisco, ladies in the room and ladies Zooming in. So it was easy for me to go all Zoom when pandemic started. I said to my clients to do that. Many of them had their best year ever in their business the first year of the pandemic because they rinsed and repeated this strategy. So I'm hoping right now, if I was to look at your calendar, don't necessarily have to have the topic, but you have time blocked out every month for a workshop. 
And if you don't have enough potential clients, do it twice a month for Q1. The other thing though, my friends, do you have time blocked out after for sales? If not, that's also what I want you to block out for 2024. Super tip alert, super tip alert. What puts smiles on the screen or derriers and chairs, if we're talking live and in person, is personal invitations. Give you an example. A gal comes to me. She says, Katerina, I'm doing my workshop next week. I only have three gals signed up. I said to her, what did you do? She said, well, I sent an email to my list. I posted on my Facebook. I posted in some groups I belong to. I went networking and I said to the gals in this in the Zoom room, hey, if anybody wants to come my thing, I put the link in the chat. Okay, yes, lovely. She did all that. All of that, my friends, is promotion. Promotion, 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 promotion. None of it was a personal invitation. And what forces a decision is a personal invitation. I look online like the rest of you every day. Oh, Sheila's doing this. That looks good. Oh, Mary's doing that. Oh, yeah, I've been meaning to get to her thing. But what has me open my calendar? Take a look. Make a decision. When somebody sends me a DM that says, hey, Katerina, I'd love for you to come to my thing. Why? Because if anybody that DMs you, sends you a direct message, has even a little iota of influence with you, you're going to respond to that DM, right? Well, what do you got to do before you respond? You got to make a decision. This, my friends, I will tell you, it's going to put 10 times more smiles on the screen. Not only are the DMs another touch, what we also do is we put the link because a lot of people somehow didn't see the link. And I know for me, I always want the links for what I'm doing tomorrow on my calendar today. This is standard operating procedure. Before every workshop, midday, the day before, we say, hey, Sheila, so excited to see you. I put the link or sometimes my team helps me. Why? Because I know the more touches, the more people are going to show up. So are you doing that as an SOP also? To do that, you would also need time on your calendar. Now, I'm going to tell you that in beginning of November, we had our Expand Your Fempire Summit. The week after I was around, the week after that, I went on a cruise with two of my clients, fabulous gals. They did a cruise called Profits in Paradise, a business cruise, and I was one of the participants. So what did that mean? That means I only had one week after my big event for the fall to talk to people and hopefully add some new clients. I booked 44 sales conversations for that week. That is a record for bookings. 37 of those happened, meaning they showed up, they didn't need to reschedule. That is also a record, by the way, of my, my top record. From those 37 calls, I sold over $84,000 of services. That is also a new record. In November, with Thanksgiving, with being on a cruise for a week, I sold over 100 k of services in that month. I'm telling you this because I'm asking you, are you tracking what you're doing? Because I want you to know how many calls does it take to get a sale so what i did from those calls is i looked at them and it was about a 30 percent close ratio meaning of those 37 wonderful women i talked to i believe it was about 12 became a client so for you do you know how many women you have to talk to to get a new client if not i want you to pay attention to this our goal is at least 30%. If what you're selling is much lower cost, hopefully you're having at least 50%. But you want to know if it's 10 or 20 or 30 or 40. And the reason is because I was going for a 30% close ratio, which is why I booked 44 appointments. You want to look at the math, okay? If I want 20 smiles on the screen, I know. 
I'm going to have a 50% show up rate ish, right? So that means I am going to make sure I get 40 signups for that workshop. Now, if I want 40 signups, how many gals do I have to invite personally? By the way, I send the emails, we do the posts, we sometimes do ads. If I send an email to my list, which is about 14,000, now, of course, not everybody's opening. If I get a couple signups for my workshop, I'm blissing because I know it's personal invitations that does it. If I want 40 signups to get 20 show ups, the equation is four by four by four, meaning if I want 40 signups, I take that number and I times it by four. That's 160. Now you're saying, Katerina, that's a lot of people. Bing, 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 super excitement alert, super excitement alert. On my free resource page, there is a video. It's about nine minutes. It's called Facebook Geotargeting. This has nothing to do with ads. It will allow you to do a search. You'll see this, the sample in the video is my friends in Sacramento. On one page, all my friends, this is before I got hacked last year where I don't have as many friends. All my friends from Sacramento showed up on one page and it had their name and their picture and it said, send a message. So without excitement alert, excitement alert, without going to everybody's profile, you can send many direct messages in a short period of time. That is very exciting. And that's what you do. Oh, by the way, always put people's names. I don't like it when somebody sends me an email. Hey, beautiful. And I know they're sending it to all their Facebook friends. I mean, it doesn't feel personal. Okay. So always put their name. And if you could say, hey, Sheila, great to see you at the XYZ last week or blessing to see your new puppy on, on your page. Absolutely do that. The more personal, the better. Now you say, Katerina, that's, that's a lot of time. My friends, that's going to be a little time for the clients you're going to get on the back end. So that's for smiles on the screen. Personal invitation, personal invitation, personal invitation. By the way, when I go speak somewhere and I say, come to my next workshop and I put in the chat and I take a couple minutes to talk about it, I might get some signups. I have standard operating procedures for what I do after every talk. Take a screenshot during the talk. Look people up after and have for every talk or every workshop. And by the way, you do the same for networking. I have a tab on my Excel spreadsheet, XYZ speech, the names of any of the people that were there, their social link. And then it says, reached out on LinkedIn, reached out on Facebook. Now, when I reach out, if I'm the speaker, I'm doing exactly what I just did in the speech. Here's my link to my free resource, whatever it was I mentioned. And here's a link to my next workshop. Would love to have you there. Now, I just invited them 10 minutes ago. But that was not a personal invitation. That was promotion. So everybody see the distinction? You do this, you will be blissing in your business. Okay, I got to give you another super, super, super tip that will catapult your sales. Ready for it? So the reason I was able to book 44 calls in one week was because 21 of them were booked before the event even happened. I remember I told you I was talking to my fabulous gal in Chicago yesterday. We scheduled a call for late January before we got off the call. Always schedule the next call before you get off the call. What did I say? Always schedule the next call before you get off the call. Even if you're scheduling it for September, schedule it. And you know why? Another reason to do that? then you don't have to worry about being a master at follow-up. It's already on the calendar. Also, when I'm personally inviting people to come to my workshop or I'm inviting them to come to my Fempire Summit that we did in November, and they're saying, oh, Katarina, I'd love to come. I'm putting the follow-up call on my calendar before they come to the thing where I'm building the influence. My friends, this one strategy of booking the call before the workshop even happens this will catapult your sales. Start to pay attention to your numbers. What's your best week ever? What's your best month ever for sales, but also for bookings? Because we want to get you better and better and better. So one of the things about selling is if you know 
what I know, which is that I will never sell anything to anybody unless I'm sure I can give them value. Women that are just getting started, they don't have things figured out yet. They don't know what they're selling. They're not the right match for me. I am not going to sell them anything. When you only sell with integrity, my friends, this is your protection. Meaning it's okay for you to ask people to talk to you. It's okay for you to invite people to a conversation, even when you're not sure if they're the right match, because you know you're not going to sell them anything or try to sell them anything unless you know you can serve them. Are you inviting enough people to talk to you? Now, really, there's three kinds of calls. They're not all really sales calls. Some of them are connection calls, connecting, see if there's a match. Some of them are consideration calls, meaning, hey, do you want to take a look at my XYZ? And some of them are closing calls where you're discussing the opportunity to work with you. Recognize they're not all really sales calls, but the thing is that the more calls on your calendar, the more clients you're going to get. You will see that. My recommendation is that you're talking to at least 12 people a week that are potential clients. My friends, if you would like more support with your sales, I want to invite you to schedule time to talk with me. We have our private sales program. It is a 12 week program. Why do you want this class? Because it takes these concepts, but it does a lot more. It provides you ongoing support, ongoing guidance, a structure of accountability that will create focus and momentum. The other two things you need to create massive change are ongoing encouragement and community. And I want to invite you to talk to me. First of all, I want to get to know you better. I want to see what your goals and plans are for your business next year. And if it's the right match, I will invite you. If it's not the right match, that's okay. Let's continue to be friends. And then down the road, when the timing's better, we can absolutely have another discussion. Let me remind you that you have massive value to bring. There's a lifetime supply of people to serve. I invite you to master your sales so you can sell more, you can serve more, and most importantly, you can uplift more lives, the amazing woman you are and the services you provide. Thanks, my friends. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Expand Your Empire with Katarina Rando.